It's a Sunday full of showdowns. Some would come down to the bitter end. The NFL's top two rushers go head-to-head -head in Kansas City. While the Rams continue to battle adversity, and it's much worse than just 0-4. It's the NFL's top D versus the NFL's top O. So what gives? Get Randy Moss's off-the-field distractions. How would he perform on the field? An emotional Sunday at the Belfry. The United States unable to hold off Europe's final charge for the Ryder Cup. The clock is ticking for those sluggers striving for milestones. And these teams looking for the home field advantage. With Silky with Sports Center now. Hi again, Sports Center about to drop bows on them with Dan Patrick. I'm Stuart Scott. Coming up on the program, we'll sort out the home field advantage for baseball's postseason. The Europeans' cup runneth over, and the Rainbow Warrior proves he's not out of the points race, not yet. We begin, though, with the NFL. Going into week four, the league had seven unbeaten teams and seven winless teams. We begin with two of the latter, Vikings and Seahawks. Randy Moss arrested this past week, obviously doesn't want to talk about it. First quarter scoreless, don't blink on Sean Alexander. Touchdown number one for the guy who had 1,318 rushing yards and 14 touchdowns last year. Later in the first, Alexander again, doing mad work. The academic All-American from Alabama from 20 yards out, 14 zip Seahawks. Second quarter, up 17-10. Let me tell you something. Sean loves Sunday night getting his groove on. Last year in the Sunday nighter against the Raiders, rushed for 266 yards, fourth highest total ever. Gets a screen pass here, 80 yards to the house. Third touchdown of the night, 24-10 in the second quarter. The ensuing kickoff, Vikings Nick Davis clocked by Tim Terry. Hawks recover. Tim is yoked. Moments later, y'all got to give me that. Alexander from three yards out. 111 yards rushing in the first half. That's his fourth touchdown of the first half. 56 seconds after the last one. Next kickoff, Dwayne Bates stripped by Terry again. So next play, I ain't going to say nothing, but this ain't right, man. First player in NFL history to score five touchdowns in one half. 38-10 Seattle. Third quarter, Randy Moss who has 16 touchdown catches in 14 career primetime games, drops one in the end zone. Same drive, dropped another one. Randy having his issues. There's another drop. And Randy Moss, who had six catches for 50 yards, dropped three potential touchdown catches. Moss and the Vikings lose. Seahawks win their first game of the year. Sean Alexander, the truth, five touchdowns, had 139 yards rushing. So I said, he loves Sunday night. After the game, Sean ran up to our Susie Calber and said, Suze, I just had five touchdowns. You got to throw the microphone in my face. Stuart, I don't know what it is about Sean Alexander and Sunday Night Football. What is it about prime time? I'm truly blessed. I have no idea. God says, I'm going to let you shine on TV, so hopefully he keeps it up. I must have been doing stuff right. <laughs> what was working tonight that wasn't working in your first three games? Uh, we just spread the field more. You know, everybody's been gunning for us to stop the run, and uh, we just kind of spread it out, and uh, there was holes there, and I just tried to run hard. After a performance like this, what do you do for your offensive line? <laughs> <laughs> I've got to do a lot for them because we play Monday Night Football next, and, uh, you know, it's going to be an awesome thing. Congratulations. All right, thank you. See y'all later. <laughs> hey, what's up, D? <laughs> Stuart. Thanks, Suze. Thanks, Sean. Remember, Alexander did lead the AFC with 16 total touchdowns last season, dating back to 1965, which was Gail Sayers' rookie year. The list of players to score five touchdowns in one game reads Paul Horning, Kellen Winslow, Jerry Rice, James Stewart, and now Alexander. Remember, Sayers tied the NFL record his rookie year in 65 with six touchdowns in a game. Winless Rams hosting Dallas. Marshall Falk in the lineup. Hurt his neck on Monday night at 73 yards rushing, 67 yards receiving. Kurt Warner sacked by the first-round pick Roy Williams. Kurt Warner hits the turf, and he knows this is trouble. Got a splint on his broken right pinky finger. Here's his thoughts on how it happened. I know I got hit and then landed and I'm assuming it happened when I just kind of tried to plant you know my hand to you know to stop the fall and just kind of came down awkwardly. Same finger he broke two years ago. Enter Jamie Martin. Martin with the Rams down seven nothing. A perfect toss to Isaac Bruce. First person there to congratulate. 
Or Warner. Just don't hit the other hand with a high five. No. <laughs> Tied at seven. Martin, 24-37, 262 yards, but sacked by Greg Ellis. That made Jeff Wilkins' field goal attempt 49 yards instead of 43 yards. And he hit the upright. Dallas gets the ball and gets Billy Cundiff, a rookie, set up for a 48-yard field goal, and he nails it. The Rams go to 0-4. Kurt Warner gets an MRI on Monday. Rams 0-4 for the first time since 1963. The start is tied for the second worst by a team that reached the previous season's Super Bowl. The 1987 Giants 0-5 start included replacement games. To baseball now, a regular season finale for a team that's already clinched a postseason spot is still ginormous. The Cardinals are one game back of Arizona for home field advantage in their first round division series. Cards hold the tie-breaking edge, so if they beat Milwaukee and Arizona loses to Colorado, cards have home field. Yes, it matters. Last year, same two teams in the division series. D-backs prevailed by winning the fifth and deciding game at home. St. Louis hosting Milwaukee. Wayne Franklin looking to end the Cards' chance for home field. Bottom four, Franklin facing Mike Matheny. Matheny yokes a shot to left. Max Stairs got his Ph.D. Play a hater degree. Stairs making up for an 0 for 3 day at the plate. Franklin goes seven innings, one hit, no runs. But in the eighth, Luis Vizcaino facing Edgar Renteria. Aye, Poppy, I did not know you could hit the sweet spot like that. Renteria brings in Scott Rowan and Albert Pujols. Renteria finishes a year, 305 average, 83 RBI. Cards win four zip, and they await this. So as the result of the Cards win, Arizona had to do likewise to secure home field advantage in the first round. Bottom four, Chad Moeller. First home run in 107 at-bats. Went four for four, two-run homer, 5-2 lead for Arizona. Kurt Schilling coming in for his first relief appearance since 1992. Facing Brent Butler, who said, I just tried to hit it hard. He did. Yeah, really, huh? Three-run homer. Rockies cut the lead to 11-6, but the Diamondbacks hang on. Here's Buck Showalter looking ahead. Arizona versus St. Louis. On paper, it looks like the classic starting quality pitching, starting pitching in particular with Arizona versus a great offensive club. Not that St. Louis doesn't have some quality pitchers with Matt Morris and Chuck Finley at the front. But the thing you got to keep in mind, Matt Williams was very quietly swinging the bat well at the end of the season. They didn't have Junior Spivey last year. He finished having a great year at 300. You got Steve Finley there. I think Mark Grace is going to have a big year. I lean a bit, a little bit towards Arizona, especially with the home field advantage. Thank you, Buck. So the Cardinals face the Diamondbacks. Buck's former team in a rematch of last year's five-game NLDS. Randy Myers and Matt Morris in Game One. Chuck Finley opposing Kurt Schilling in Game Two. Both games on ABC Family. Coming up inside Sports Center, a battle of unbeatens in San Diego. It's Ricky versus Priest, Bears and Bills, Panthers and Packers go down to the wire, and how the Lions roared against the Saints. Baseball, did anybody see 40-40? Did Sammy reach 500? That and playoff predictions from our Baseball Tonight crew. But next, Tiger and the boys needed a zinger of a finish in England to retain the Ryder Cup. Sports Center, brought to you by Callaway Golf. Enjoy the game. And Verizon Wireless. We never stop working for you. To the Belfry for the final day of the Ryder Cup. U.S. Captain Curtis Strange saving his best players for the later matches. Sam Torrance going with his best players early. Scott Hope against Colin Montgomery. Monty. He was the man. Monty. Was all week, wasn't he? Never trailed in any of his matches. He would win 5-4, and four, Europe up 9-8. David Toms against Sergio Garcia. Fifth hole, Toms with the long birdie putt, one down. Did he use a three-wood for that putt or what? David Toms will go on to win one up. One of the few bright spots on Sunday. Mark Kalkovecki against Patty Harrington. Seventh hole, Harrington for a birdie, two up. He would win 5-4, and four. Europe up 10-8. Phil Mickelson against Philip Price. Philip Price is the 119th player in the world. Lefty, number two in the world. Mickelson goes down, two down. David Duvall against Darren Clark on the 18th. To have the match, Duvall 
will do so. Curtis Strange looks on. U.S. trailing 11.5 to 9.5. Back to Mickelson against Price. Price, two up. Playing like Nick Price, isn't he? He would birdie to go three up on Phil Mickelson. Paul Azinger against Nicholas Fast. Azinger down one on the 17th, trying to extend the match, and he rolls it in. Down one, and we go to the 18th. Back to Mickelson against Price. 16th hole, Price putting for the birdie and the win. Philip Price has just defeated Phil Mickelson. Europe leads 13 and a half to 10 and a half. Back to Zinger. Zinger must hold the bunker shot to stay alive. And he did exactly that. Azinger halves the match. U.S. trails 13 and a half to 11 and a half. We'll work on this celebration yeah. at some other time. They missed about four or five high. I, 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 I. I'm gonna put somebody's eye out. Jim Furyk against Paul McGinley. Furyk, same bunker as Azinger. And this to win it. We look at it again, and Furyk comes about a half inch away from knocking it in. They have the hole. 18th hole, McGinley. At least they thought they were going to have the hole. No, they didn't. Ryder Cup rookie drains it, and the Europeans have won it. Curtis Strange looking on in disbelief. Sergio Garcia runs back. In the 18th fairway and will hug Pierre Folke's caddy. Now, Folke and Davis Love's match was not complete. Love explains to Curtis Strange that he and Folke agreed to have the match. Back on 18, Tiger putting to win his match against Jesper Parnovic. So the party is on. Europe wins it 15 and a half to 12 and a half. Final margin, the largest by either side since 1985. McGinley and Harrington literally letting this one soak in. Here's Curtis Strange talking about Sam Torrance. I thought he took a hell of a gamble by front loading front loaded his team like he did. A heck of a gamble. Because if they don't do well, in my mind it was over. But they went out and played well. They got blue on the board in the first four matches early. And then the crowd got into it. And I think that was exactly what he wanted. It was a risk, but in life, I suppose you don't uh, get rewards without risking. And uh, Sam risked today, and it, and it came off. The key to today was really our top guys that went out this morning and just put the blue numbers up there. They were magnificent, and Monty was, um, as he always is, fantastic this week. And go thank God he doesn't hold that many pots every week. <laughs> Out of 34 Ryder Cups, this was only the sixth, where the United States was outpointed in the singles matches on the final day. The U.S. has now lost the Ryder Cup on five of these occasions, winning by a point back in 1953. Back to the NFL. One 3-0 team finally brings the due props that it deserves. The other 3-0, well, beating the Bengals, Texans, and Cardinals is kind of like beating the JV team. Everybody knows New England's number one scoring offense is legit. Question whether San Diego's number one scoring defense is. Says Charger D. Lyman, Marcellus Wiley, if we win, I don't care where the parade goes. They can come to my house. The Chargers have not beat down the Patriots since 1970. Chargers and Pats. Last week, Bill Belichick's Pats allowed 180 yards rushing by Priest Holmes. Second quarter, LaDainian Tomlinson led the NFL with a 339 carries last year. Off the meter, 37 yards to the house. 27 carries for LT, 217 yards. Third quarter, tied at 14. Watch the arrow. This is Chargers wideout Tim Dwight, an ex-track star. He just shatters that white men can't run stereotype because in 99, Dwight competed at Iowa in track after his rookie year in the NFL. Kid's got wheels. Back to Sunday, same play. He's got wheels and he's got no shirt on and he can go. Watch as Dwight goes in motion. Thomason gets the ball, breaking off another long run. And watch, watch this. A bunch of speedy black guys in the shot, right? Right, Dan? Well, black guy. Yeah, but check out the white dude, white lightning. Tim Dwight, great speed, tremendous block to spring Thomason for the long touchdown. Chargers looking to go 4-0 for the first time since their Super Bowl year 94. 17 seconds left. Tom Brady, who bigged up with 353 yards passing. Got it to Kevin Falk, tried to ladder to David Patton. Uh-uh, Tomlinson was off the hook. Chargers win. We shook up the world, baby. We shook up the world. I mean, it was a big win for us. It was a big win for us. We had to check ourselves. It all came down the heart, and this team had.
Tomlinson's 217 yards, second most against a defending Super Bowl champion in history. O.J. Simpson lit up the Steelers in 1975 with 227. Priest Holmes a buck 80 last week against the Pats, sixth most ever against a defending Super Bowl champ. Unbeaten Dolphins in Kansas City. First quarter, Chiefs down 7-0. First and goal, Trent Green looking for his all-pro tight end, Tony Gonzalez. And Tony, the former Cal basketball player. Off two feet. Priest Holmes, who was a teammate of Ricky Williams at the University of Texas, gets a great block from Trent Green. You can't let the quarterback put you down like that. That's a speedy white quarterback, I think, who's doing that. Oh, uh, somebody's going to get toasted in film yeah. session on Monday. Arturo Freeman is going to hear about it. Fourth quarter, Chiefs leading at 31-23. Green to Gonzalez. First tight end with three touchdown receptions in a game since Kent Dilger in 1997 against Miami. Green, 328 yards, five TDs. Jay Fiedler, four interceptions. Greg Wesley had three of the four picks. Chiefs win this one and do so, making it look easy. 48-30. Bears and Bills. Bills didn't get their second win until their 12th game last year. First quarter, Travis Henry <laughs> coughs it up. Recovered by Roosevelt Colvin, who laterals to Mike Brown. Can I get a little bit of that? Brown, the only guy to ever win an overtime game two straight weeks with an interception return for a touchdown, goes 62 yards. That was Henry's fourth fumble this season. 32 picks left. Mike Collins, 39-yard field goal, blocked by James Big Cat Williams. His ninth blocked field goal of his career. We go to overtime after the Bears went three and out. Drew Bledsoe, as cool as the other side of the pillow, gets it to Henry. Drew's NFL record, fourth career overtime touchdown pass, and Henry redeems himself for his fumble in a big way. A lot of guys was coming up to me, um, patting me on my back and just telling me, don't worry about it, um, you'll get it back. And um, that just made me more confident and um, comfortable when I went out there to get a chance to, to try to redeem myself. Bills win it 33-27. to 27. Unbeaten Panthers in Green Bay. Brett Favre and the Packers faced the Panthers back in the 1996 title game in the NFC. Favre, 10 years ago this week, became the Packers starting quarterback. Laterals to Bubba Franks to Donald Driver. Green Bay up 10-7 at halftime. Fourth quarter, 14-10. Panthers inside five minutes. Favre of 18 of 32, 200 yards. And that is a bullet. Driver. Packers lead it 17-14. Favre talked about the play after the game. Threw as hard as I could at Donald. I knew it was a tight window, but at that point, I don't think we were going to get much, you know, uh, any more open than what he was, and he wasn't open. 27 seconds to play. Panthers at the Packers' six, third and four. Rodney Pete loses yardage on the play, so it's fourth down. New Panther kicker, Shane Graham. Oh, the way back machine. This was in warm-ups. Not good form. 16 seconds to play, 24-yard field goal. Graham. And there would be no overtime. And head coach John Fox can't believe it. Neither can Graham. Marvin the Packers hold on to win it by three. Saints, Lions, Joey Harrington, 15 of 35, 182 yards in first game as a starter, getting righteous in his second to Bill Schrader, 38 yards. Schrader's got some mad up, still got that Lambo leap. Harrington, 20 of 35, 267, fans love him. I've got a lot of learning to do, but I'm, uh, it makes me feel very good to know that, that the crowd is behind me, that the fans have that enthusiasm and that we're really building that, that energy. Fourth quarter, Saints trying to build some energy, third and goal. Aaron Brooks steps up, finds Jerome Pathon, six yards in the house. Brooks, 27 of 48, 269, two touchdowns, two interceptions. They go for the two-point conversion. Watch Chris Claiborne just absolutely bum rushes Duke, Deuce McAllister. Mm. Bringing that wood. Lions trying to run out the clock. Saints out of timeouts. Lions fake the reverse. James Stewart finds a hole. Peace. Lions only had 85 yards rushing, 37 of them came on this play. Jim Haslett needs a hug for therapy. Lions win it 26-21.
Jeff Gordon has paid a visit to both ends of the rainbow this season. His wife filed for divorce, and he went 31 straight races without a victory. But Gordon also won his 60th career Winston Cup race, and he has finished a modern-day record 56 consecutive races dating back to last season. The four-time Winston Cup champ entered Sunday's Protection 1 400 in Kansas City in the rearview mirror of points leader Mark Martin, trailing him by 190 points. Former Kansas City Chief Joe Montana, the Grand Marshal. Rough race for Sterling Marlin came in fourth in the point standing, lap 147. He would skid and be gone, finished 33rd. That's Jimmy Johnson running into trouble as uh, well. He will blow his right rear tire on lap 171 and finish 10th. 17 laps to go, Mark Martin's car shuts down, his crew trying to help him. Martin doing all he can, the engine won't start. Unable to compete, call AAA, he finished 25th. The winner, Jeff Gordon, talked about his team's goal. We left Dover saying, hey, we've got to go to Kansas City and do something spectacular and hopefully get a win. Jimmy Johnson takes over the points lead from Mark Martin. He's the first rookie to ever have the points lead at any point during a season. Gordon's third win this season has him in fourth place in the standings. Gordon right now, 109 points back. Still up, Alfonso Soriano set the Yankee record for at-bats in a season, led the AL in hits, steals, and runs, but could Kidd join the 40-40 club? What about Sammy sitting on 498 homers, hadn't homered in nine days? That changed on Sunday. And it might have been Halloween for Oakland, and that made it. Had plenty of trickery for the Titans. And in Pittsburgh, it was a wild, wacky overtime thriller as the Steelers went after their first win of the season. Controversial ending, you got to see it. Pirates and Cubs, Sammy needs two for 50, two for 500 for his career. Bruce Kim coaching his last game for the Cubbies. Sammy at 498, not for long. Sammy Sosa, holla at a player. 49th of the year, 499 for his career. He had been in a one for 19 slump. Cubs up two zip, bottom seven. Sammy, trying again. Mm. Got schooled by Al Ray. Sammy does not become the first guy with five 50 home run seasons. Cubs win the game 7-3. Vlad Guerrero made his final attempt at the 40-40 club Sunday against the Reds. Bottom seven, man at third. Vlad did get his third RBI of the day, breaking Al Oliver's Expo record for hits in a season. He ends up with 205 hits, but no 40 home run club. Yankees and Orioles, Soriano, his last chance for 40-40, third inning. One on, one out, second at bat, foul ball, great diving catch by Jeff Conine. Soriano does not get 40-40, but still, 39 homers led the AL with 41 stolen bases, 92 extra base hits, top five. Booyah, Jason Jambi, 41st homer, second most home run by a first-year Yankee since Babe Ruth at 54 1920. Yanks win 6-1. Harold Reynolds breaks down the Yankees-Angels series. I was so impressed with the Yankees down the stretch. Now, I wasn't picking the Yankees about three weeks ago, but they are clicking in full cylinder. Number one, Roger Clemens. I just think that he's had his best stuff coming down the stretch, and he's got a new pitch. He's got great movement on that fastball. The Angels are a team that makes contact, but I think against Roger, he's going to give them a tough time making contact as often as they do. Then the other thing about the Yankees that stands out in my mind is Derek Jeter and Giambi. The middle of that order. I think Jeter's going to have a big series because he's hitting in front of Giambi. I'm not stepping out of the limb right here saying Jeter's going to have a big postseason, am I? No, I didn't think so. I'm picking the Yankees to win this series. Angels and Yankees get underway Tuesday at the stadium. 18-game winner Jared Washburn opposes the Rocket. Game one, Clemens just 6-6 six and six in 21 career postseason starts. A's and Rangers, Jermaine Dye, and the Lord said you got to rise up. Grand slam, fourth of his career, 24th homer of the year, 8-1 A's. Bottom seven, Pudge Rodrig Rodriguez, maybe. Last game as a Ranger, this is how Pudge does. 19th of the year, 215th of his career. A's hold on to win it, though, 8-7. Buck Showoff, breaking down the Twins-A's Division Series matchup. Oakland versus the Twins. Well, you look at it, you don't really think Twins probably have a chance on paper. I think the Twins really do have a chance. Keep in mind, all they have to do is win one out of three, in my mind, in Oakland. Because I don't think they're going to get beat in the Metrodome. A lot of people forget about how much of a home field advantage that place is. And if those kids 
the young players with inexperienced players in postseason play can get off to a good start in Oakland and not get buried there, not necessarily win a game, but try to concentrate on winning one out of three games. I think they have enough firepower in that bullpen. Starting pitchers keep them close. As good as Oakland starting pitching is, I'd be a little bit worried about Kachi at the end, especially in the Metrodome. The Twins, like the Angels, have no position players with previous postseason experience. The A's won the season series with Minnesota six games to three. D-Rays and Red Sox, Manny Ramirez leading the American League, 349 average. That's nine points higher than Mike Sweeney. Manny will walk in the seventh inning as a pinch hitter. Third time in the last four years, ninth time in the last 22 years, a Red Sox has won the batting title as Manny finishes 349. Sox win it 11 to eight. Any old time the Steelers and Browns crack helmets for the 100th time, the first AFC rivalry to reach 100 games. And with a tradition that complements history, Pittsburgh and Cleveland have combined to send 31 men to the Hall of Fame. The game stands on its own merit, which makes outspoken Steelers safety Lee Flowers the soundbite icing on the cake. And there's a reason that Century 21 and Remax were glued to this one. Potential business. I bet you my house, my house will call it $1.6 million. I bet you my house, we won't be 0-3. Dan and I get the house if they do go 0-3. Second quarter, Cordell Stewart, my bad. Quarterback rating of only 68. Steelers settled for a field goal. They got it back. Y'all can play that back at Cleveland all you want. We will not be 0-3. How many bedrooms, how many baths, Dan? Is there a swimming pool? $1.6 million for a DB. It's a big crib. Cordell Stewart picked by Robert Griffith. Again, we will not be 0-3. Interest rates, interest rates are down. They're low. Eight minutes left. XL MVP Tommy Maddox to Plaxico Burris. Tommy six for seven on his first drive. Tied at 13. We go to overtime. On second down, 24-yard field goal to win it. Todd Peterson's field goal block. Peterson gets it, does a Gary your premium kind of fumbles it. Steelers recover. Steelers keep the possession, though. It's now third down. Here's why Cleveland did not get the ball. Since the ball never crossed the line of scrimmage on the block and it was not fourth down, Steelers keep possession. Maybe not a good rule, but it is a rule. So Peterson gets a mulligan. Just appropriate in Ryder Cup day and hits a 31-yard field goal. Game over. And then there's a happy homeowner in Pittsburgh. We will not be 0-3. I would have talked the agent down to 1.2 million personally. Let's go to Oakland for the Raiders and the Titans. First quarter, Raiders up 7-0. Titans punting. Philip Buchanan filling in for Charles Woodson in the secondary, but back there to receive the punt. The uh, first round pick out of Miami proves that he is multi-dimensional because he is gone. 83 yards, Raiders up 14-0. Next Titans possession, Tennessee is punting. Do they punt to Buchanan? Yeah. But he shares the wealth like any good rookie. Gives it to Terry Kirby. Ooh, somebody got a block. Terry Kirby. 77 yards. Raiders up 21 nothing. Well, they're not done. 24 to seven. Rich Gannon, 29 of 39, 381 yards, four touchdowns, including this one to Jerry Rice, who would pass Walter Payton for career yards from scrimmage. Raiders up 31-7. Steve McNair threw for a career high. 398 through Frank Whitecheck's hands. Rod Woodson is there. 11th time he has taken a pick back for a touchdown. 82 yards. He had three interceptions in the game. Oakland wins it 52 25. Still to come on Sports Center, the Braves are locked and loaded. Can a Bonds power surge ruin their October plans? Our Baseball Tonight experts predict who will win this series. The Rams' downward spiral continues with a bad break for Kurt Warner. Much, much more on the 0-4 Rams. It's gone from bad to worse for v v v v Vinny and the Jets. What went wrong for the Jets in Jacksonville? You won't believe the day that Brian Dawkins had. How this eagle two-stepped the Texans. And you won't want to miss Chris Berman's top 10 plays of the week. This is SportsCenter on ESPN. Astros and Giants, Barry Bonds sitting out. Resting for the playoffs is good to be the king. They'll hit 370, 46 home runs. Bottom two, Roy Oswald looking for his 20th win. Bonds replacement, Tom Goodwin. Scores your victory all, but Goodwin went two for four, which is nice, but Barry, the first Giant to win a batting title since Willie Mays in 1954. G-Men wins 7-zip. Bonds shattered the record books again. 
370, the oldest NL batting champion at age 38. His 582 on base percentage, 29 points better than the previous mark held by Ted Williams. For more on the Giants and Braves playoff matchup, Harold Reynolds, holla at us one time. This is a tough one to pick right here, the Giants and Braves, but I'm, I've been on the Giant bandwagon for a, week, a month and a half, and I'm going to stay there. Why was I on their bandwagon? Because I felt like they were starting to be a team that was going to get hot, and they are on fire. The whole lineup is swinging the bat, and the pitching has been great. Now, Barry Bonds, a big question mark. What will he do? I think he will have a big postseason. He's more disciplined. He went through the home run chase. He understands not to chase bad pitches. I think Barry steps up to all the critics in the postseason. Bonds, the two pitchers that he's abused most for home runs in his career, Smoltz and Maddox. The Giants-Braves series gets underway Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern on ABC Family Channel. Russ Ortiz against Tom Glavin in Game 1. Barry Bonds looking to improve upon his one home run in 97 career postseason at bats. Back to the NFL, and when Brian Dawkins heard the news about Donovan McNabb's record-setting contract, he had mixed emotions. Happy the franchise QB was taken care of, but disappointed that the announcement came during his own contract talks. The All-Pro Safety, whose deal runs through next season, said after the Eagles gave McNabb his deal, which included a $20 million signing bonus, there isn't any left over for him. Dawkins and the Eagles hosting the Texans. McNabb, 12-year, $115 million later. Watching Brian Mitchell take the direct snap. Mitchell shovels it to Brian Dawkins. And Dawkins will take it in for the score, 27 to 7. Mr. Dawkins, your thoughts on the play? The fake was uh, presented on the sideline, and it's on, it's on. And if he saw a certain look that he was going to call it, and he called my number, and from there, I just made sure I stayed down the line. I almost tripped. I caught it, looked up field, two guys to beat from my right, and took it to the house. Dawkins wasn't done. Dawkins is the first player in history with an interception, a sack, a fumble recovery, and a touchdown reception on the same day. Here getting David Carr, the Eagles win it, 35-17. Bucks and Bengals, Achilles Smith making his first start of the season. A minute remaining in the first half, and Smith finds Shelton Quarles. Problems, Dan Shelton. Total place for the Bucks. Took it back 25 yards. Bengals 0-4 for the sixth time in 12 years. Watch again. Quarles never moved. Kelly just, just threw him the ball. Since he's been outscored this year, 119-23. to Bucks win 35-7. Season has gone from bad to worse for the Rams. It won't get any better anytime soon. A report from St. Louis is coming up. And speaking of bad to worse, Vinny and the Jets. Low lights of the Jets in Jacksonville. And the best of the best, we call it today's best. We'll run it down from the gridiron. And Stuart and I return in a moment. Struggling Jets and Jags. First quarter, seven zip. Jags, Vinny Testaverde got his world rocked by Marcus Stroud. Vinny will leave the game with a bruised shoulder, x-rays negative. He did not return. For his career as a starter against the Jags, Vinny 0 for 7 passing. Third quarter, Fred Taylor, the bona fide truth. Fred says, I have spoken, so it shall be. 142 yards rushing on 21 carries, 95 yards receiving on three catches. When he's healthy, he's as good as anybody in the game. 28-3, Jags win it. Let's go to Arizona, the Cardinals and the Giants. Closing seconds, Kerry Collins picked off. Coach? I will never in my life, ever, take a chance and try to be aggressive again. You don't throw the ball flat, you throw it down the field, you get out of there. Justin Lucas, 38 yards on the return. Jake Plummer, fourth quarter. Marcel Ship grew up not far from Giant Stadium, played at Massachusetts, finished with two touchdowns, and finished off the G-Men. Is it time to warm up the hearse? The Pro Bowl highest rated QB of all time is out. The Pro Bowl offensive tackle is out. The only thing that looks worse than the Rams 0-4 record is the fact that counting the Super Bowl and the preseason, it's 0 for their last nine. Since 1970, an NFL team has started 0-4 91 times. Only one, the 92 Chargers, made the playoffs. As Andrea Kramer reports, times is rough in St. Louis. The Rams have said they can't catch any breaks, but the one they got, they certainly don't want. Kurt Warner's broken pinky on his throwing hand could keep him out four to five weeks. 
and so much for all the pregame speculation about what's the problem with the reigning MVP. At least we know what's wrong with Kurt now. I guess that answers everybody's question. I wish I could be out there. I mean, this is, you know, any time in my career here, this is the time that I'd love to be out there leading this team and, and uh, get us back where we belong. And, uh, you know, but I'm going to do what I can on the sideline, and I know everybody's going to pick up their game, and we're going to get out of this thing real quick. Nobody around here is going to make an excuse, you know. We're not going to say, hey, Kurt's out. We haven't in the past. We would just rally behind whoever's in there at any position. So I don't think that's going to be, you know, a, a disheartening thing for this team. Jamie Martin will be making only the second start of his nine-year career next week at San Francisco, and it's been four years since the last one. What adjustments need to be made to the offense with you under center? Uh, I don't think any adjustments. Hopefully Mike will just keep going like he, like he always does and you know, I'll play a little better and, uh, and we'll get a win. How much more can you do, especially after we see the kind oh, of performance no. you've had today? Uh, that's as much uh, gets loaded up on me. I'm going to try to handle um, every ounce, every bit of uh, uh, what they give me. That's, that's what I'm going to do. Warner said he thought he'd undergo surgery on Monday, so he'll be in the hospital. Coincidentally, so could Jamie Martin. His wife is scheduled to be induced to give birth to their second child on Monday. Talk about real-life timing and pressure. In St. Louis, I'm Andrea Kramer, ESPN. Andrea, thanks still up. Roll call. Today's best is flat-out hype. You might be shocked at who ran for 100, caught for 100, and threw for three. Also, Sean Salisbury is our Sunday evening QB. How did LaDainian Tomlinson torch the packs? And Chris Berman's top Ooh. ten plays always a mixture of surprise, suspense, intrigue, and jaw-dropping fatness. Goodbye, Sean Alexander. Touchdown. Sean indeed walks in. Touchdown. Alexander touchdown. Sean Alexander's night overshadowed the afternoon, turned in by LaDainian Tomlinson, the San Diego Chargers running back, torched the Patriots for 217 yards. Fred Taylor, 142 yards. Pretty impressive afternoon and evening at the running back position. Back to pass is Green. Sends the fade out to the left and wide open, Gonzalez at the 20. To the 10, to the 5, he walks in, touchdown. Tony Gonzalez may be headed to the Hall of Fame one day. They might as, go ahead, might as well go ahead and put Jerry Rice in now. 69th career 100-yard receiving game with 144 yards. He now has 21,281 career yards from scrimmage, a new NFL record surpassing Walter Payton by 17 yards. Bills quarterback Drew Bledsoe, one of Sunday's top passers, 28 of 36, 328 yards, four TDs, including the game winner in overtime, his NFL record fourth overtime touchdown pass. Air McNair, a career best, 398 in a losing effort. Rich Gannon has now thrown for 784 yards over the last two games. Trent Green, a career high, five TD passes in KC's win over Miami. With more from Sunday's action, our Sunday evening quarterback, Sean Salisbury. Sean? Dan, there were some great performances in the NFL on Sunday, but we've got a couple individual performances that people are going to talk about at the water cooler on Monday, and it starts at quarterback in Pittsburgh, where Cordell Stewart was benched, and this guy Tommy Maddox came in and put on a wonderful performance to get Pittsburgh in the win column. Take a look at his head. This is a guy who hasn't played in eternity. He's going to throw the ball out there, but he's going to hold the safeties. Looks like a guy, the way he was reading it out today, had played every single game, makes a nice pitch and catch, get out of bounds. Now they're down 13 to 6 and driving, and look how quickly he gets it out of his hand. 2.3 seconds to give Plex Burris a chance to run after the catch, trying to get in range to score a touchdown to put this into overtime. Maddox again. Pitch and catch. Out the right corner, Randall L is going to stay in bounds as the clock keeps moving. This was all done in the gun and no huddle. As tough as it gets out of the shotgun. A slant route with a safety driving, a quarterback on a three-step drop trying to grip the ball and get it accurately thrown and put it in the right man's hands for a touchdown. He does. They end up tying it, going into overtime, and winning on the right arm of Tommy Maddox. LaDainian Tomlinson. Look at the number of bodies that are on the right side of the center. That's five of them. That's five of them. Teddy Bruschi, LaDainian Tomlinson. Best tackler on their football team, Bruschi. Now they should make this play, right? Look at this move. He's going to have him okie doke this way, give him a little zombie mask and take it to the house back door with a great effort. 
with his eyes up. Yes, San Diego. Yes, Marcellus. Yes, Ladanian. You guys are the contender. You knocked out the heavyweight champ today. Another great play. Gonna come in here, come in here. Thomas is gonna come. We're gonna get a man coming around. Tim Dwight with a fake reverse. Two other guys. You think Tomlinson's got more moves than a U-Haul? I want you to watch him. He's gonna come around and come into play. Look at this move here on the backside. Here comes Tim Dwight out of nowhere. This is how you get long runs. This is how you break touchdowns. Dwight's effort's gonna free LaDainian Tomlinson to the house for the knockout punch. A huge day, 217 yards to put the Chargers in the 4-0. Now you got three teams that are undefeated in the West. The Chargers are one of them. Guys, you were right. You're not a pretender in San Diego, Stu. This is a contending team, the San Diego Chargers. Word. Coming up, it's our often imitated but never duplicated Chris Berman's Plays of the Week. Chris Berman's Top 10 Plays of the Week is brought to you by Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Gatorade, is it in you? Well, our plays literally span the globe. We honor a couple of masters and uh, to honor our friend Gordon Lightfoot, and we changed the line a little bit from the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. At 4 p.m., the main hatchway gave in and said, fellas, it's too rough to feed you. In the field goal department, let me show you what I mean. I know it's a little eclectic, but just trust me here. 357 Eastern, Jeff Wilkins trying to give the Rams the lead over the Cowboys. It is too rough to feed you. No good. At 417 in Buffalo, Mike Hollis for the win against the Bears, blocked by Big Cat Williams. One minute later in Pittsburgh, Phil Dawson for the Browns, win in overtime over the Steelers. No good. Two minutes later at Lambeau, Shane Moonlight Graham. No good as the Panthers can't tie the pack. Todd Peterson blocked six minutes later, but he gets another shot two minutes later. Five big misses and a game winner in 31 minutes. Yikes. Play nine. All oh, those tricky Philadelphia Eagles. Brian Mitchell shoveled to Brian Dawkins. Another special team touchdown for Harbaugh's heroes. All oh, those tricky ratings. Top pick, Philip Buchanan, already with a touchdown on a punt return. Hands it to the veteran, Terry Kirby. He could go all the way as the Raiders bombard Tennessee. Oh, those tricky Packers. We don't like guys that throw it righty. Right, Brett Favre? We're going to let Bubba Franks throw it lefty. Touchdown to Donald Driver. College football, they honor the 72 Louisville team. Of Tom Jackson. It's raining hard to throw the football, hard to catch the football. I think it slowed Florida State down a little bit and gave Louisville a, a better opportunity to be successful tonight. Tommy is the Louisville Schwamm. He was talking in the second quarter. And Henry Miller, touchdown run in overtime. Louisville shocks in the rain, Florida State. Ryder Cup, Monty, he was a python. 4 0 and 1 to lead the Europeans. The shot of the Ryder Cup was Paul Azinger out of the trap. We've seen him do it in majors. We've seen him do it in this major to keep the U.S. alive. But then Paul McGinley lets them uncork the pebbly at the Belfry for Cap.